All right, back again, episode 15, CYSA. Trying to answer those five questions. Five questions to help you pass your cybersecurity exam, right? Five questions. We're going to go in depth with them as always. Uh, I want to I want to get right into it. These usually take the longest because there's a lot more explanation that goes along with it. And I'm, I'm trying to cut down the time. So let's see if we can't do that. Question number one. A cybersecurity analyst is tasked with setting up PKI system to ensure secure communication between internal systems. Which of the following must the analyst configure to allow users to verify the authenticity of a sender's public key? Of a sender's public key. What do you think? What do you think about this? What is PKI? What are all these funky acronyms that this guy is throwing in front of me? Do you remember? I got to tell you. I got to tell you. 40%. I know I say it every video. I say it every video. 40%. 40% of your CompTIA exam can be passed from A plus all the way up to CYSA, Pen Test Plus, uh, just by knowing the acronyms. It really can, just by knowing those acronyms. 40%. Probably not at Pen Test Plus and CYSA. It's probably closer to 35%. It really is. It's not as bad. Security Plus, it's like 40%. Dead even 40%. I I'm I make no qualms about it. I 100% say that, right? So CYSA Pen Test Plus probably probably 30%, probably 30%, right? All right, let's uh, let's answer this one a few more time. Of course, you can pause the video. A cybersecurity analyst is tasked with setting up a PKI system to ensure communication between the internal systems. Uh, which of the following must the analyst configure to allow a user to verify the authenticity of a sender's public key? Well, what is PKI? PKI is public key. Uh, uh, but, but, but I can't talk today. Public, <laughs> public key infrastructure. I finally got it out. Public key infrastructure. So, uh, let's, let's, I'm, I don't normally do this. I usually start with A or D. I'm going to start with B. I feel like we can get rid of B right off the bat. Why would PKI need to be configured, uh, to allow the user to verify the authenticity? Aren't we trying to set up PKI in the first place? I, I feel like that's an easy one to get rid of. Uh, I love PKI. That, that's the entire framework, though. That's not that's not what we need to individually set up. I mean, I I, I think that's there. Honestly, I think I, I think they would put something like that there just to screw with you, just to screw with you, just to be like, if you know it, you know it. If you don't, you don't. Right. So PKI not going to be the correct answer. Uh, yeah, I started with B. Let let's let's drop down to A. CRL Certificate Revocation List. Why would we set up the revocation list? Uh, to verify the authenticity of the sender's public key. Why Why would we do that? That doesn't make any sense. That leaves OCSP, right, or CA. OCSP or CA. Is it the online certificate status protocol, or is it the certificate authority? Well, if you said certificate authority, you would be 100% correct. Trusted entity responsible for issuing and verifying digital signatures. Ensures that the public key presented belongs to the claimed entity. That would be the certificate authority. That's going to be our right answer, CA. There you go. There you go. All right, question number two. A security analyst is conducting a forensic investigation after a suspected data breach. During the investigation, the analyst collects several devices and logs as evidence. Which of the following is the most, the most... Uh, important step in maintaining the chain of custody for this evidence. What do you think? What's the most important? Most important. You'll see this all the time on CompTIA exams. They're they're notorious for it. They'll give you typical CompTIA exam, in my opinion, typical, right? Is two obviously wrong answers. Obviously wrong. If you know cyber. And then and then they're mean and they're dirty and they're rotten scoundrels. And they're like, here's two answers. Which one's better? And you're like, uh and so you really kind of have to know it in depth. And they do that exceptionally well in CYSA. They do. Uh, it's a whole nother level. Uh, I think I said this before. CYSA version 1 and version 2 were kind of a joke. I took both. Was not impressed with either one. In my opinion, you could have gotten CYSA version 1 and version 2 just by having Security Plus. There really was no big difference between the two. Uh, anybody that knew Security Plus with a half-decent score could get CYSA right. Seriously. Uh, CYSA version 3, the newest version they came out with, much better, much better. Like it a lot. Really do. A lot of log questions, a lot of output control questions, a lot of critical thinking questions. 
uh, a lot better of an exam. They, they truly did a great job with CIYSA version 3, in my humble opinion. All right, let's answer this one. A security analyst is conducting a forensic investigation after a suspected data breach. During the investigation, the analyst collects several devices and, and logs as evidence. Which of the following is the most important step in maintaining the chain of custody for this evidence? A, labeling the evidence and ensuring proper storage. Um, I mean, yeah, we want to do that. But is it the most important step for maintaining chain of custody? I, I think it's a good step. We want to make sure that it's got a, a proper storage and, and we want to label it because we didn't. Yeah, so A is a possible. A is a possible. Uh, B, documenting each individual who accesses or handles the evidence. Uh, absolutely. Is B better than A? Yes, B is much better than A. So I would go with B at this point. Encrypting the evidence to prevent unauthorized access. That is not part of chain of custody. Chain of custody has nothing to do with encryption the evidence. Um, matter of fact, depending on where we encrypt it, we could actually be ruining our evidence uh, if we do that. Because we need to have the original raw form unencrypted just how it was appeared. We encrypt it, we alter it, we alter it, then it's no longer admissible. So C is not, not something we would do. Uh, D, creating a forensic images of each device for future analysis. That is something we would do. 100% something we would do. Because we always make copies of the original, and then we do the analysis on the copies. We don't do the analysis on the originals. Uh, but is it better than B? Well, if we read the question, which of the following is the most important step in maintaining chain of custody for the evidence? Chain of custody for the evidence, not analysis. Then B would be our correct answer. B is going to be the right answer. Uh, and there you have it. This is how you need to approach these questions as we go through. All right, there we go. There's B. All right, question number three. An organization is experiencing degraded network performance over time with certain applications becoming slow or unresponsive. Upon investigation, the network administrator suspects that degrading functionality results from a slow burn DOS attack. Which attack, well, I'm sorry, which, which attack? Which actions, which actions should the administrator take first to mitigate the issue? Which one? Which one? What do you think on this one? Mm, this is a difficult one. Purposely so. I know. I know. We're getting into that. Uh, we're getting into that uh, form right there. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, I feel. I feel like we can answer this one. I feel like. I feel like we got time. If you need more time, if you need more time. You can pause the video. Okay. Let's do this one. An organization is experiencing degraded network performance over time with certain applications becoming slow or unresponsive. Upon investigation, the network administrator suspects that degraded functionality results from a slow burn DOS attack. Which action should the administrator take first to mitigate the issue? Let's start with A, increase network bandwidth to handle more traffic. That's not going to fix our DOS attack. That's just going to handle more traffic. Eventually, we're going to have to, what, increase it more? And then more again, and then more again, and then more. No, no, I don't think so. That's, no. Uh-uh. Not going to do that. Uh, block all traffic from external networks. Yeah, that's always a good idea. We should shut down our internet. That's, really? That's an answer? No, I don't think so. Uh, C, analyze network traffic patterns for anomalies and rate limit suspicious traffic. Oh, that's not a bad idea. If we analyze network traffic patterns for anomalies, and once we find an anomaly, we rate limit it so that it, it can't take as much traffic. This would, this would definitely, this is definitely an idea. Definitely on my top, on my top of my list. Uh, D, reboot all affected systems to restore functionality. No, that's, that's not going to happen. No, no. C has got to be your answer. C has got to be the answer. People ask me all the time. They're like, hey, why do you, why do you approach the answers differently between Network Plus, Security Plus, and then CYSA? You go through them a lot of times in order uh, instead of just picking them up. Because I feel like, I feel like with CYSA, you have to take a different response to it. Uh, and so I'm showing a different way of doing it. That's why. That's why. That's the only reason why. You can do it any way you want. You'll also know the other the other thing I'll often need asked, and we'll go into this a minute. Let's get to our next question. You can hear me ramble on while you're reading. Uh, all right, question number four. A security analyst analyzes suspicious files for malware and receives the following output. What is the most appropriate next step for the security analyst? You can read through that. Uh, and then we have our answer. So I get asked all the time by, by the different students because, you know, I have students. Uh, and they ask me, they say, okay, when you're doing your videos, you you read the question, and then you let us read the answers, and then you reread the question, and then you go through the answers. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, why do you do that? And I'm like, because you should be doing that at your exam. You should be reading the question, then reading the possible answers, then rereading the question, 
and then rereading your possible answers, right? That's how you should approach it. Uh, and it should take you all about 25 to 30 seconds to do that. And then answer it, that's another 15 seconds. That's it. That's that's your 45 second mark for CYSA. Uh, we don't want to go for security plus, you only want to go about 30 to 45 seconds. In, in CYSA, you have a little bit more time, not a lot more time, a little bit more time. Uh, you can go 45 seconds to a minute, but I don't recommend it. I don't. Uh, CYSA PBQs are a pain. Uh, I think I spent five to 10 minutes on each one and it takes that long. Even to know what you're doing, it takes that long uh, just because, okay? Because there are commands, you have to critically think. I remember on one PBQ, I always had like four different things that I'd correlate to figure out the answer. Um, and I didn't bring the whiteboard because they asked me, it was like, oh no, I never used it before. Stupid me, stupid, always take the whiteboard. Uh, I really could use the whiteboard. All right, let's 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 answer this one. Uh, a security analyst analyzes suspicious files for malware and receives the following output. What is the most appropriate next step for the security analyst? If we look at our file output, we have a file hash. Uh, we have a file size 2.5 megabytes, 38 of 67 detections. That is quite a few detections. First seen in 2024, 9.10. Uh, last analysis, 9.12. We see that it's a Trojan downloader and ossification. All right, so we definitely have an issue here. So let's start with A, quarantine the file immediately and block it across all systems. I like this answer. I like this answer a lot. Uh, this could possibly be our correct answer. Uh, I'm going to definitely stick A on my on my thing. Now, I want you to be careful here, okay? And I see this a lot. And I know I'm pausing. I'm going off on a tangent, right? Uh, a lot of people will see the what they think is the right answer, and then they'll just, they'll just answer it. Don't do that. Don't do that. Always read all the available answers. There could be a better answer. And, and if there is a better answer, then you just screwed yourself, okay? Uh, B, perform manual analysis of the file to conform, confirm the detection. I don't think we need to do that. We've already confirmed the detection. We're seeing it. We've seen 38 of 67 detections. It's been flagged significantly, uh, so we don't need to do that. Upload the virus uh, file to virus total for further scanning. Uh, I don't think we need to do that either. We've already detected it. We know that it's a Trojan. We've, we've already, we have 38 of 67 detections. Uh, allow the file... Allow the file since it was only detected by a portion of the... No, no, we wouldn't do that. So A, A is the answer. A is the answer. That's going to be correct. There we go. A. All right. Uh, question number five. A security analyst runs a vulnerability scan on the company's web application using Arachne. Based on the scan results, what should the, an analyst prioritize to secure web application? To secure the web application. What should we analyze? Uh, based on what should the analyst prioritize? Oh my gosh, cannot read today. What should the analyst prioritize to secure the web application? What do you think? Give you a few seconds on this one. Uh, another locking, another tool output, another tool output, right? Yes, CYSA has tools that you have to read through. There's specific tools that you have to read through. Uh, one of the things I don't like about it, one of the, one of my complaints about, about um, CYSA, I'm sorry, you can't read that final answer. I just noticed that. Let me get my... Bad habit. Let's do this. Let's turn off my picture. We'll do that. We'll turn off my picture. Um, there we go. All right. One of my one of my biggest problems, right, with CYSA and CompTIA. If you're ever listening to this, right, they have these free tools, and they I, I swear whoever developed it was like, oh, they're free tools, and I know how to use them, so I'm going to go through it. Yeah, they were free three years ago, but some of them now aren't really free, and so you can't really use them. And then the AWS ones. Like you cannot run a vulnerability scanner legally on AWS. So why why you provide a tool that is supposed to be free that I can't actually use on AWS unless I own um, and get permission from AWS? I have a I have a problem with that one. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe AWS provides a free testing platform that I haven't been able to find. I, I'm curious if you're if you're watching this video and you're like, hey, professor. Uh, or Dr. K, or whatever you want to call me, or Chet. I don't, I don't care, right? Um, what, what? Here, here, here's a link to this tool that AWS gives you, so you can actually practice on their stuff. I would be interested to see that. I really would, because I have not found anything, and I'm curious why CompTIA would put an AWS tool as part of their knowledge base when legally you're not allowed to test AWS unless you have permission. And it's not just AWS; it's it's all their thing. And so it's like, hey, I don't I don't get this comment yet. Can you can you explain this one to me? Am I missing something? Am I am I being dense? What's going on here, right? And so coming up with these scripts a lot of times, it, it's a pain in the butt. It is. All right, 
Moving on, a security analyst runs a vulnerability scan on the company's web application using Arachne. Based on the scan results, what should be the analyst prior? What should the analyst prioritize to secure the web application? All right, so we see cross-site scripting detected. We see the example.com search, da da da. Severity is high. Remediation, sanitize user input on all forms. We see SQL detected. We see it's critical. Use prepared statements for SQL queries. So we have two reports from Arachne over here, and that's that's going to be one of our issues right off the bat that we have to deal with. Okay. All right. So let's let's go through this one. A patch the server operating system. Uh, the operating system has nothing to do with the web application in this instance. So A easy one to get rid of. Easy one to get rid of. That's not going to be the answer. B sanitize user input to fix the cross site scripting vulnerability. Ooh. Sanitize user. It's almost like it took the answer directly from the report. So B is a possibility. I like B. B's B is definitely in there because it even tells us remediation. Sanitize user input on all forms. And then it says sanitize. Yeah, so definitely a definitely one I would pick. B is definitely a correct answer. A correct answer. Uh, C implement prepared statements to mitigate the SQL injection vulnerability. Well, absolutely, because we see that one here. Use prepared statements for SQL queries. I mean, it tells us what the remediation is. So C is another correct answer. And then B, D, excuse me, D, block um, external access to web applications until further review. What, why, what? Why would we, that doesn't make any sense. We wouldn't do that. All right, so that leaves B or C. And they're both good answers. They really are. So which one will we do more? Which one is going to, which one's the priority? Because it says based on the scanner results, what should the analyst prioritize? Ooh, I know, right? Because they're so right. They're both right. But here's the problem. Severity, 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 high, critical, critical is always going to win. C, C is the answer. There you go. C. All right. I hope you learned something from this one. If you did, I would appreciate that thumbs up. Until next time, I'm Dr. K. We'll see you. Bye.